first video of the new unit. This unit is going to be all over what we call factoring polynomials. This is not new to you. You have factored polynomials, or you've at least factored before. You Back in elementary school, when you sat down and you wrote down all the greatest common, or all the factors of something to find the greatest common factor, you've done that, but we're going to do it with polynomials. So last unit, we learned how to multiply polynomials. This unit, we're going to take the answers to those questions and go backwards and get back to the problem. So we're going to factor and come up with the two things that multiply to equal that. So like this first example, this would be the answer to one of the multiplication problems that you did in the last unit on the test you just took. We're going to work our way backwards through this and we're going to come up with the two things that multiply together to equal that. It's called factoring. It's a very important concept. It's going to be used, you're going to use it a lot. So it's, it is very, very important. The, this is part one. We're going to learn how to factor using the greatest common factor, and then we're going to learn how to factor using grouping. All of that happens in this video, and then we'll have a part two, and then we have a special products part three. So you've got three parts to your factoring. We're first going to factor with the greatest common factor. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to look at this polynomial, and you're going to look at the coefficients 14 and 18. What is the greatest common factor between 14 and 18? Yep, it's 2, because 2 is the biggest number that will go into both of those and, and factor, factor into both of those. Now, the variables get tricky. They're not that tricky, but if you look at this 14xz and 18xz, how many x's do they have in common? Yes, they each have 1x, so they have an x in common, so part of my greatest common factor also has to be an x. Now, the z's are a different story because this one has a z to the first power. We just don't see the little one. And this one has a z squared. That means this one has one z and this one has two of them because this is z times z. So they only have one z in common. If it's hard for you to remember that, always go for the smallest exponent. The smallest exponent is what they have in common. So they have a two, an x, and a z in common. There's your greatest common factor. Now we have to multiply that greatest common factor times something that is going to give us this when we multiply. So now we're basically dividing, we're going to work backwards. 14 divided by 2 is 7, okay, because 2 times 7 gives me 14. Now I've got to do the x's and z's to make sure everyone, everything fixes up, because when I multiply this times this, I have to get 14xz back out. Well, 2 times 7 takes care of the 14. Here is my x. It's already there, so I don't need to put my x down. Here is my z. It's already there, so I just, if I do 2xz times 7, it's going to be 14xz. So I'm done with that part. Put your minus sign. Now, 18 divided by 2 is 9, so 2 times 9 gives me 18. I have an x. I need an x, so my x's are taken care of. But my z's, I have a z, but I need z squared. So I have to put a z here so that when I do z times z, it becomes z squared. These are the two factors of that polynomial. You can always check factoring very, very easily because, so you can always make sure you got your answer right without ever having to ask a single question. Here's how you check. If I multiply these two things together, it should equal what I started with. So we're gonna test it. 2xz times seven is 7xz. 2xz times 9z is going to be 18xz squared. This matches that. If it doesn't, your factors are wrong. But since it does, I know my factors are right and everything is good. But it, there is an easy check with factoring. It is one of the easiest things there is to check. So now let's factor this next one. 8ax and 56a. Well, let's do the coefficients first. What's the greatest common factor for 8 and 56? Yep, it's 8. Now, what else do those two things have in common? They both have an a. So 8a is going to be my greatest common factor. They do not both have an x, so I cannot put x as part of my GCF. I just have to put the 8 and the a because that's the only thing they share. Now I've got to do the multiplication part. Well, 8 times 1 is 8, so I've taken care of that. a, there's my a. I don't need anything to do with a, but I do need an x because when I do this times this, I've got to end up with 8ax. So I've taken care of that. Now 8 times... 7 is 56. I know that's a tricky one because that's the most difficult multiplication fact out there. It's the one nobody can remember. 8 times 7 is 56. Here's my a, so it's already taken care of, so there are my two factors, 8a and 1x minus 7. Those are the two factors of that polynomial. 
And again, you can check it by doing the multiplication and see if it, you come back out to where you started. So let's practice a couple more. These are a little bit longer, but they work exactly the same. This time I have three terms. I have 28a squared, bc squared, c squared, 21a squared, bc squared, and 14abc. Well, let's do some number fir numbers first. 28, 21, 14. Greatest common factor is 7. Now let's do the a's. a squared, a squared, a to the first. Smallest exponent, a to the first, so I'm going to pull out a to the first. b squared, b to the first, b to the first. What's your smallest exponent? b to the first, that's what you're going to pull out. Now do the c's. c squared, c squared, c to the first. Smallest exponent, that's what you pull out. Now, 7 times 4 gives me 28. A times A will be A squared, B times B will be B squared, and C times C will make C squared. I've done with the first term. 7 times 3 is 21, A times A is A squared, B times nothing gives me B to the first, I don't need to add the B because that's taken care of, and then C times C is C squared. Minus. 7 times 2 is 14. ABC, ABC, those are taken care of. There are my two factors. Next one. Hopefully, you can get this one really fast. Greatest common factor of 35 and 40. 5. Now do your variables. I got A squared, A to the third. My smallest exponent is the squared, so they have A squared in common b third and b squared, well b squared is the smallest, and then c and c squared, c is the smallest. So there's my greatest common factor. 5 times 7 is 35, a squared and a squared I'm good, b squared and b will give me b to the third, c and c, the c's are good. 5 times 8 is 40, a squared times a will give me a to the third, my b squared is taken care of, but c times c will give me c squared. There are my two factors for that one. So that's factoring with greatest common factor. We're gonna skip and start looking at factoring with something called the grouping method. This is actually a pretty important concept because, <coughs> excuse me, um, the grouping method is gonna show up in several of the other things that we do, so it's good to start practicing. Um, grouping method only works when you have an even number of terms, so, if you only have three terms, grouping method doesn't work. Four terms, grouping method will work. Six terms, eight terms, you get the point. You've got to have an even number of terms. Two terms you don't need to group because those are really easy to factor, but four and up, you need an even number. So here's how grouping works. I'm going to put these in parentheses. I'm going to put these in parentheses. So see, I have grouped. I've made two pretty little groups. Now we do that GCF thing we were just doing, but we do it twice. We're going to take this set of parentheses and pull out the greatest common factor. So just look at this first set of parentheses. The two terms, rx and 2ry, what is the only thing those have in common? The only thing they have in common is an r. So my greatest common factor for this set of parentheses is an r. Now let's talk about what's left. r times x is rx. r times 2 will take care of the 2. And then the y takes care of the y, so r times 2y is 2ry. I've done with that. Now, put your plus sign. Now, what's the greatest common factor for this second set of parentheses, my second group that I made? The only thing they have in common is a k. Well, k times x is kx, and then k times 2y is going to give me 2ky. So I have just factored with the grouping method and then GCF, it sort of puts them both together. And if you will look, look at the parentheses that you have in what you have just written. X plus 2Y, X plus 2Y, your parentheses are exactly the same. That is a clue for you that you have factored correctly. If your parentheses turn out different, you've made a mistake and you need to go back and fix it. They have got to be identical, otherwise you didn't factor correctly. The fact that they are identical tells me that one of my factors is X plus 2Y. So this, the parentheses, what winds up in parentheses is one of my factors. The fact that they are the same is an instant check for you to know that you didn't mess things up. 
Your other factor is what's left, the stuff that's not in parentheses. So what's not in parentheses? R plus K. So my other factor is R plus K. And if you go check this by doing double distributive property, once you multiply, this is what you will end up with. If you don't believe me, you can pause, go check it, and come back and, and, and see. But these two things will multiply to equal what we started with. Now look at the next one. This one is already grouped for you. They have already taken care of the grouping. And if you'll see, the parentheses, a squared plus b squared, are already they're the same. So this one's really easy to factor because they've done it for you. One of the factors is a squared plus b squared. The other factor is what is not in parentheses. That's the only thing I have that is not in parentheses. Well, your other factor is not just x squared because if you just write down x squared, it's not going to work. There is an invisible one in front of this set of parentheses. We don't write it because one times anything is itself. There's no reason to say I multiplied by one because we already know it equals the same thing. So it usually is not written, but you need to understand that that one is there. So this plus one is also not in parentheses. So your other factor is x squared plus one. So these are the two factors for that. So let's try a couple more. This next one we're going to group these two and these two. Greatest common factor for the first set of parentheses between 6 and 8 is going to be 2. And what about their n's? n to the third and n squared. What's the greatest common factor going to be? Yep, it's going to be n squared. So now you check to do multiplication. 2 times 3 will give you 6. And then n squared, I need n to the third. So n squared times n is n to the third. Now 2 times 4 will take care of my 8. n squared is already here, so I don't need anything else, so there we go. Now, check this out. What's the greatest common factor for 3n and 4? They don't, there isn't one. There's nothing they have in common, which means their greatest common factor is 1. It's the only factor they have in common. So your greatest common factor is 1, which means that I still just have 3n plus 4 because 1 times anything is what you started with. Okay, so look, my parentheses, yay, they're the same. So one of my factors is 3n plus 4. My other factor is what's left, which is 2n squared plus 1. Now the next one is tricky, and here's why it is tricky, is because of this minus sign right here. Every problem that I have just shown you before this one have a plus sign in the middle. This one has a minus, which is going to affect the problem somewhat. Okay, so we're gonna group just like we did before, except this time I'm gonna group the negative into my group. I left the plus sign out here because it doesn't really matter, but the negative I'm going to group into my, put it into my group because it is going to change things. So greatest common factor for this first set of parentheses is going to be two a squared. So greatest common factor for four and two is two, and then a squared is the other thing they have in common. So then the rest of this becomes um, 2 times 2 is going to be 4. a squared times a will give me a to the third. And then 2a squared times what will give me 2a squared? Well, the only thing I can multiply something by and get itself is going to be 1. So I have 2a minus 1. Now, this one right here, don't worry about the negative for just a minute. Just give me the greatest common factor for 6 and 12. Greatest common factor for 6 and 12 is going to be a 6. So I'm going to put a plus 6 right here. I promise that this negative will work itself out. So here we go. 6 times what is going to give me negative 6? Because I have got to end up with a negative 6. So it needs to be a negative 1. And then 6 times what number gives me positive 12? Well, 6 times 2 is positive 12, and I still need the A. Now, if you will notice, these don't look identical. But if I were to rewrite the 1 over here on the right and flip it around, I could make it 2A minus 1 so that they do look the same. So they are the same. They're just not written identically. But they, are, they do match. So one of my factors is 2a minus 1. My other factor is 2a squared plus 6. So there is grouping method and, then the, and, and GCF. So there is factoring part 1. We will work on homework tomorrow. Don't forget some of you have to finish a test. Have a good evening.